This 14th century flour mill, powered by the water of the River Tyvee at Kenarth in Cardiganshire, owes its present existence to Mr. Alan Williams, who restored it. We asked him why he did it. My wife was a miller's daughter, and she wanted me to get it going. So uh, we added going, and, we, and it, it, it was a big job. And the, local, the people of Kenneth wanted me to do it. So we went at it and took us six months to renovate it. We couldn't get spare parts to it. It was like an old car, you couldn't get it. So we had to have a welder here. And a smithy from Newcastle Emlyn engineer came down. His name was Evan Thomas. And he put electric light in then to get to get the welding machine down to run it, to weld the parts. That's how we had it going. It was a big job, yes. So it's been going now since 1957, and we opened it on 15th of April. And um, we had a crowd here, and the donkeys were carrying the corn into the mill, and we had uh, the vicar of God's last down here to open it, and he gave a sermon on the bread and fishes. And uh, now my son is running it now. I've gotten a bit, a bit too old now to run it. I'm 76 years of age. So I'm very lucky that my son is getting in touch with the mill and he's keeping it going. So the mill remains one of the attractions of Kenarth, but there are others because the Tyvee is a salmon river. Up until recently, the fish used to be caught from coracles, but for various reasons, they are now dying out. Bernard Thomas is one of the few coracle makers left. Well, one of the reasons uh, of the coracles vanishing is uh, that uh, in this stretch of river from uh, Sackley Bridge to Kenneth, the fishing has been stopped uh, owing to a bylaw past years ago. And um, without fishing, people will, they won't have no use for coracles. Haven't times changed, Paul? I remember years ago, and all the coracle fishermen used to come up these steps, you know? Mm. And my father then uh, used to be up the top of the watch and see what fish he had. Well, that was the livelihood in those days. As it is, there's only a very few left of us that can make this craft. And, um, I think it's a shame that it uh, should die out. Myself, uh, when I make them, I, I'm quite prepared to show anybody my method of making them. I do teach people how to handle them. Uh, that is a thing that uh, in the summertime, uh, I'm not exaggerating by uh, giving a figure of hundreds. And I wouldn't like, be exaggerating in saying that uh, thousands of people call to see the corrigals, and not only from Great Britain, but from all over the world. It's not very difficult to make once you know how. And uh, you should, after get preparing all the timber, uh, you should uh, be able to complete the whole thing, uh, the frame I'm talking about, in about uh, three hours. The pitching and uh, the covering and pitching of it, then it'll take you a day to do that. Well, to learn how to make it in the olden days, uh, the, the biggest difficulty was that the people, the coracle makers of the time, they held it as such a big secret and it was always made behind closed doors or behind hedges. And uh, if they were inquired uh, 
how to start assembling the craft, uh, they will tell you everything by the right way. Myself, when I make them, I make them on the side of the road, and anybody that's willing to pick up the idea, I'm quite prepared to teach anybody. People seem to have a feeling uh, in a coracle. Well, I don't get it myself because I've been in it all my life, but uh, they seem to have a marvelous feeling by going into it. It is a, a unique craft. There is and no other craft that can touch it for its uh, maneuverability and things like that. I don't see why any man should go from this world taking an ancient uh, secret with him.